How are you? Hey, that was, uh, I apologize. That was a little frustrating. I could not get in. I, I had our meeting from the 22nd, but go ahead. I know you want to get live, so why don't we go ahead and rock and roll here. Yeah, you know what? Your technology, I'm having technology problems. I normally do this from my, my desktop that I'm looking at, and uh, I'm holding my smartphone up, which is better than the alternative of not being on here, but thanks for, uh, thanks for jumping on. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to get with you. It's, uh, it's been a while since I saw you in person, but this will uh, do just as well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think we last saw each other at Inman in New York in January. And here we are. It uh, looks like, are you back in the office or are you at the home office? I'm at the home office. I mean, uh, from a Realty perspective, I, I don't know that uh, we, Century 21, Coldwell Banker, any of our Realty staff in Madison will be back to uh, the home office uh, for a bunch of months here in New Jersey. Sure. So uh, we're all sure. still working remotely. Okay. Okay. I think we're all adapting here. I'm based here in the Chicagoland market and uh, my office is about 10 minutes from home. So I get more done here. So I, I, I jump over to the office. I know how it goes. Trust me. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thanks for being with us. Uh, we have some C21 people on and we'll, we'll be uh, posting this replay. Uh, again, normally I'm streaming it live to multiple groups and I'm going to do that here in a minute when my computer uh, stops acting up. But in the meantime, let's jump right into things a little bit. Great. So you, you've been in the current position. You took over for Nick B Bailey uh, about two years ago now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, gosh, I, uh, it, it's probably about 19 or 20 months at this point. Uh, but okay. it, you know, it's like dog years. It feels like forever. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you know, Mike, but I, I've been with the Century 21 brand for over 22 years now. So it's been, it's been near, near to my heart. You know, I saw that from your bio. So, um, but this is an unprecedented time, right? I mean, you know, 07, 08 was obviously very difficult, uh, but I think we're all adapting um, as best we can. Absolutely. And um, so you've been with Century 21 through the whole rebranding and everything like that. And you guys uh, are very, you know, I've been very impressed with uh, what you guys have done and what you're continuing to do. Um, fair to say you're what, one of the top five brands in, 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 the, in the world as far as uh, volume is concerned, about $100 billion in volume? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, just uh, to give you a sense of the size and scale of the brand, I mean, we're literally uh, 84 countries. It changes almost, you know, monthly. 84, okay. 11,000 offices, 135,000 plus or minus sales professionals. So um, certainly, uh, I say, um, the truly only global residential real estate brand with the kind of reach that we have into, you know, almost every continent, right? Except one. So, well, you know, it's funny you say, so I actually was at your conference last year. You guys did a, a conference where you've had your own breakouts, but, but you also, also combined with Century 21, Better Homes and Garden and, and Cola Banker. Uh, it was a great conference. Uh, but we know that conferences are on hold for, for most companies here, probably until 2021. And um, so tell me a little bit about, you know, what, what are you guys seeing? You know, here we are, uh, I guess in two days, we'll, we'll be at the midway point in 2020. And um, in my marketplace, I talk to a lot of agents and brokerages uh, from across the country, and they're actually seeing the market surprisingly really healthy right now even though we're in the middle of pandemic and and some people you know think a recession's on the way some don't but some do um what are you guys seeing so far at century 21 as we approach july of 2020 yeah so a couple of things you were at uh the real the rgx the real g exchange in vegas which we had well over 10,000 sales professionals from the many different brands that was actually believe it or not that was 2019. We were lucky enough as a Century 21 family, we were lucky enough to pull off our global conference in LA in February, which seems like forever ago. Oh, you know, uh, yeah. there, we had a bunch of folks coming in and, it, we, you know, not everybody in the industry was lucky enough to pull off their, you know, their beginning of the year conference. And we had a great kickoff to the year, talked about some of the things we're doing from a marketing and training and brand mission perspective. But um, just like you said, Mike, I mean, I think it's a tale of, you know, obviously what market you're in, but overall, if you really look at the statistics, we're absolutely moving in the right direction from the lows of March and even, you know, what we saw uh, in, in the very bottom at the end of April, where things were off, even from an opens perspective of 40 to 50%, um, you know, if you, if you average things out, 
uh, to you know somewhere in the teens, uh, maybe up to 20% year over year uh, at the end of May. And so you know if you follow NAR, they've been putting out, and I know you're a big studier of the industry, but they're putting out a lot of great information on a week over week basis and everything is starting to move in the right direction. And I think honestly, Mike, it's because one, we've had such strong fundamentals going into this market, right? I think you said things are very healthy. They're absolutely healthy. The, the, the only thing that's not healthy and the number that keeps moving in the wrong direction is inventory because we can't find it and we can't get it. Uh, whether you're in the luxury market or whether you're in that median market, which is 75% to 125% of the uh, average sales price, you know, it's just tough to find right now. I'm sure you're, you're seeing that in Chicago as well. So that's interesting. I've never heard that, uh, that statistic used. Um, so you define like the, uh, the average price point of a home between, maybe I'm not giving, you can correct me on how you title it, but 75 to 125% of the average sale price for that given market. What's the term you use there? So, so I, I kind of call it the mass market, right? I mean, you know, you, you've got obviously things that are, you know, a little bit cheaper or maybe distressed when they're under 75%. But, sure. you know, in my mind, a majority of the market is uh, for certain is in that 75% to 125% of the average sales price. That's okay. you know, your first time home buyers, which, uh, you know, we're seeing an uptick in as of this month. Um, I think the market was 34%. Uh, was first time home buyers, which was surprising to me, uh, just given, you know, some of the uncertainty out there in the world and some of the loss of jobs. But, um, you know, that's up year over year from, uh, from 2019, um, from a May to May perspective. So, so that's good news. And then obviously, you know, luxury is all defined, you know, depending on what market you're in, some folks consider it a million plus, but you know, you, you know, if you're in Southern California or some parts along the coast, a million bucks is still a starter home, right? So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. We were actually talking about that before you jumped on just because we, we do believe luxury is all relative. You know, some brands define it as a million dollars and above others, you know, top 10 percent. And we try to keep it really simple. Uh, most human beings are, are not the best at math. So we define luxury as three times the average sale price for that given market. So we were doing a we were doing a training for, uh, maybe you've heard of these Explode conferences, a guy named Matt Fagioli puts them on, and I was doing one in Kokomo, Indiana in November with Matt, and the average sale price there was $80,000, and we had someone that said, I was hesitant to come because we don't have million dollar plus properties here, but based on your definition, you know, 80 times three, we have a lot of 250 to fives, you know. And you're absolutely right. It's all relative for the market you're in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, I think the interesting part right now, Mike, is that, um, you know, I, I do believe there is going to be a move, uh, you know, to a different want and different desire um, in any specific market for, for what people want in and out of their homes, right? I mean, uh, whether that's, you know, luxury from a second home perspective, I think we're going to see a lot of that as, as folks kind of, you know, realize that they're going to have to spend a lot more time um, in their shelter and want to get away, want someplace right. to get to. You know, here in New Jersey, where I'm at, um, we're seeing, you know, rentals fly off the shelf at the Jersey Shore because there's no camp. Uh, people are spending more time with their family. They want to retreat and they've, they've rented out for the entire summer things that would definitely get, as you say, on this open sales market, two to three to four times the mm -hmm. average sales price. So that's where people are flocking to. But, you know, it's going to be an interesting way to see how things play out for the remainder of the year. Yeah, no, you, you bring up a, a very valid point. So I, as you might know, I'm based in the Chicagoland market and the upper end, just called million dollar plus market here has been soft for, you know, 10 years. I mean, it's been a buyer's market, years of inventory in some markets. And we're seeing an uptick, um, you know, in, in activity, knock on wood. I just had a sale last week at 4.75 and it was a record sale, the highest sale in uh, this particular area in 12 plus years. Wow. And I think you're seeing people that are pent up in the city of Chicago that are in these high rise buildings and have common areas. And they're like, listen, you know, we, we, we want a yard. We want the kids to be able to, you know, do their own thing. So I, I think you're going to see that in a lot of major areas in the United States.
everywhere. I mean, you know, again, just, uh, you know, so, so funny you say that, right? So we have one of our uh, Great Century 21 office that's actually, believe it or not, in Michigan. They're around the lake in Michigan. Okay. Nice. And they see it's, it's literally their vacation spot from all the Chicagoans who are coming around the lake and they go to this one spot up in Michigan. And, you know, he considers himself the market expert for people. Of course, um, it's one of our bigger companies, Century 21 affiliated. They have folks, uh, you know, in Chicago, in Indiana, uh, in a couple different other states. But, you know, that's where he sees all his, his business travel from. And it, it truly is a second home market because people want to flee the cities. Here in, uh, you know, the East Coast where we're seeing, uh, I don't want to call it a mass exodus out of New York City, but people are heading for the suburbs. They're heading for the Hamptons for, for summer vacation properties. They're looking to, as you said, get a bigger backyard. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here in my basement, Mike, where uh, it's not just my home office now, but it's also my home gym. Uh, and I joke around to people like across the other side of the basement is my cafeteria where I sit right. down and have lunch every day. So yeah. you know, we all want something a little bit different out of our homes yeah. these days because we're spending so much time there. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and I don't know if you guys have done some internal uh, surveys, but, you know, just off the top of your head, what are you seeing uh, buyers looking for more in a home than they were pre-COVID-19? I, I think it's exactly that. It's more space. It's more room. It's more acreage. And whether you're coming out in New York City and you want to move uh, closer into the suburbs where you have, maybe you went, like you said, where you're uh, living in multifamily to now just having a yard or whether you were in one of those closer suburbs and now you're moving a little further out west where I live and you, you have a little bit more acreage. Uh, you know, obviously, as you know, probably in Chicago, certainly here in New Jersey, you can't find anybody to put a pool in right now. I mean, yeah. people are looking for pools yeah. because they want to be at the community pool. Some are afraid to go to the beach. Um, you know, again, I think the big thing right now, and if you think about this, Mike, like we have a huge commuter lines on trains, buses, you name it from what I call North Jersey suburbs into New York City. Um, we have that all over the tri-state area, just like you guys have in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. what you see happening is people who are saying, you know, in this new world, if I don't have to go into the office, maybe I'm going in once or twice a week, uh, as opposed to five times a week, maybe I will move two, three, you know, a couple more hours out because I'm only having to go in there once a week versus, you know, having to go in there five times a week, get so much more for my money because I'm able to, you know, get out to the further distant suburbs where prices are a lot cheaper. And as yeah. you mentioned, you know, luxury in those markets could be, you could get a lot more, a lot of more bang for your buck, yeah. you know, out yeah. in the suburbs than you do, you know, kind of living in towards the Chicago's or the New York cities or the, you know, what, what, whatever major metropolitan. Yeah. You're in. yeah, that's a great point. All right, so give me one second. I'm going to try to attempt to stream this live here. Normally, I'm not do, doing two, two devices, so okay. I just want to give you a heads up in case I, I'm, I'm muted or something. So give me one second because I do want to stream this. Worst case scenario, I'll, I'll, I'll play the replay. But Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, all right, let me just – all right. So I can see you. We, got, we, we can see me on two devices here. I can, uh, I can. I know. Look at that. All right. So uh, I'm going to stream. All right. I'm, I'm going to attempt. Uh, yeah, you know what? I don't think I can stream it from this one. So it's all right. We'll do the replay unless yeah, I can. No. Um, yeah. No, but it's easier for me. I'm going to do this. Well, I don't want to mess with you. It's easier for me to look at my computer here than here, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to dis disconnect here because I don't want to mess with everybody. So f forgive everybody, forgive the technology here. I'm going to uh, X out of here, Mike, because I don't want to mess with the, with everybody. No worries. So. No worries. Uh, you know, while you're doing that, Mike, I think, you know, one of the things that we as an industry have learned, and I'm sure you're the same way, right, is that, you know, there's a handful of technologies that, you know, ha we have had at our fingertips as, you know, as a businesses or as real estate professionals that, you know, quite candidly, we, we haven't used in the past that we're all starting to push outside of our comfort zone to, you know, learn and to adapt and to, you know, figure out how to be more effective and efficient with technology. So I joke around, you know, I, I've probably been, Mike, in part of anywhere from 100 to 200 different, you know, Zoom interactive meetings across state lines or 
industry type things or Century 21 events, awards events, sales meetings, uh, you name it, you know, Inman, Realtor.com. I've been part of so many just like you have. And sure. you know, where we used to see each other in the hallways at Inman and be face to face. I'm now able to touch so many more people because I have technology at my fingertips, right? And, you know, where we wouldn't be using Zoom or we didn't use Zoom anyway, predominantly as an industry a few months ago. Now it's like, that's the way we're interacting with one another, which is kind of fun to see. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's absolutely, you make the, you make the best of it. Right. And there, there's, there's definitely benefits of, of working this way. I mean, we're doing a virtual luxury designation training two weeks from tomorrow. And, you know, a lot of agents are telling me, well, at least I don't have to spend money to get on a plane and get a hotel. And, and it's actually cheaper from that standpoint. So we're all adapting. We're making the most of it, of course. Um, it's, you know, in some cases not ideal, but, you know, you brought up the pools, getting back to what are you seeing? And, and you're absolutely right. Like our neighbors, I have an 11 year old son and a nine year old son and an eight year old daughter and the neighbor directly behind us and to the right of us have gotten pools in the last couple of weeks, but they're the above ground because even those are difficult to get. Mike, it's crazy. So I've heard about, you know, just literally folks ordering, as you said, like those rubberized above right. ground three footers and like impossible, like takes two months for delivery, which is just amazing to me. But hey, look, we're, we're all in this together. It's the summer and we got to keep the kids busy, right? Yeah, no, we, we do. I mean, sports in the Chicagoland market is starting to pick up a, a little bit, uh, but, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen. You know, the other tendency or trend I think we're going to see is multiple home offices, right? Especially for the, you know, the, 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 the upper end homes, you know, his and hers or her, his and his or whatever, I think you're going to see, right? I mean, I'm, I, I was working from the master bedroom on my first couple of these luxury lunch and learns, you know, you have the closet in the background before you got these fancy backgrounds. And it's like, you know, priorities are changing, I think. It's absolutely true. And again, I think, you know, there's, there's only so much space. So, you know, we, I literally, uh, you know, we went home from a real G Century 21 perspective called mid March when, you know, it was like, Hey, Friday, we're not coming back into the office on Monday. And so people collected up their stuff and they came home about uh, two, three weeks ago. Um, they literally all thousand employees that worked out of our Madison, New Jersey campus. They basically had us come in very orderly one at a time. You got a scheduled date. You pulled your car up and our IT staff basically took our monitors, our keyboards, our, our mouse, our printers, all those types of things and load them into our car. And so I'm finally here and set up with the technology and stuff that I need. But uh, you're absolutely right. Again, I'm in my basement where my treadmill's behind me. My kids' toys are laying all on the ground. Sure, sure. But you have a lot of, you know, you have a lot of uh, families that are double income earners where, you know, they've got one spouse working from the kitchen table and the other spouse working from the other end of the kitchen table and the kids being homeschooled, you know, literally, you know, the other room, right? So right. Uh, we're definitely going to have to figure out how to create different things for ourselves and, um, you know, different spaces. And it, it'll be interesting to see how the, uh, the home evolves. I think a lot of people are doing a lot of do it yourself home improvement projects as well. I mean, I know our Home Depot and Lowe's are constantly crowded. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of fire pits and everything else going off the shelves. That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously you have some amazing agents and, and t talk to me about like, in your opinion, the, the agents when I hate to use the word back to normal, but when things loosen up and whether it be in the fall or 2021, hopefully sooner than later, you know, those agents in your mind that, that are going to hit the ground running or are going to have an amazing year, you know, if I were to, you know, fill in the blank, what, what those agents, those team leaders, those, you know, those broker owners, uh, what, what traits, what, what, you know, they'll have what in common? What, 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 yeah, you know, I, 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 we say at Century 21, they're relentless, right? Uh, and, and that's kind of one of our, one of the words we use around our building. But the truth of the matter is, Mike, I don't, I don't think that those team leaders, those agents, those brokers, are going to be doing anything different than some of our really great agents, team leaders, and brokers have done in the past, right? And this is what I, I say this to everybody all the time. To me, you know, the market shifted on us and, you know, it got really scary because we had to worry about something that we haven't had to worry about in this country for maybe forever. And it was the health and safety of ourselves, of our consumers, of our families, of the community, right? You know, the, this, this health pandemic, this this crisis, it, you know, it doesn't care 
where you live, what your zip code is, what your race or ethnicity is, right. you know, everybody was, you know, everybody was at risk. And so yeah. you know, it was really scary. And, and I think that what the very best agents and the very best folks in our industry continue to do is they put service first, right? They were thinking about their communities. They were thinking about their consumers, their sphere of influence, their family. And they were just reaching out to people, checking in to see how you're doing, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. With them, letting them know that, you know, uh, the bagel store down on fourth Avenue is still open. If you're looking for, you know, milk for your kids and, you know, just connecting in a, a communal type of way. Is there anything I can do for you? How can I help? And I think over time that turned into business. And, you know, I, I spoke with an agent uh, over Father's Day. She sent me a text just to check in. One of our very top agents has been in the Century 21 system for years in Michigan, right in Detroit. And, you know, she figured out a way to sell 15 properties when the state was still closed down. And I think the way you do that is three, way, three ways. One is that you have an absolutely relentless mindset meaning your attitude, your gratitude, you wake up every single day, ready to go out there, fight the fight, and you're just super mentally strong, right? And there's a bunch of ways to do that. You know, I could spend some time talking about that. But the second part is that you mentioned it earlier, you know, it's your skills and your knowledge. You know, our, in this industry, we got pushed outside of our comfort zone. We had to figure out how to adapt. Our skills and our knowledge and what we knew about the market and the place where inventory was and how much a home was worth and how to buy or sell or transact in a safe manner. These were all important things and we had to get out there and educate people who were still in the market about how to make that happen. And then last but not least, I think it's, it's agents that didn't, you know, throw in the towel or you, you'll understand this statement, but they didn't consider this a snow day, right? They continued to work. They continued to do the activities. They continued to check in. And like I said, you know, Nancy Robinson in Detroit, who still sold 15 properties while the state of Michigan was in lockdown. I mean, she figured a way to do it by right. showing up and working hard every day. Yeah. Yeah. Relentless. I mean, that's a great Great word, Mike. And um, I know I've seen that before COVID-19 with Century 21 as well, but you're absolutely right, right relent, relentless, right? And Gotta do. Um, so it's great. So a couple, uh, one question here, uh, Ruthie Golden asks, uh, any new ways to market luxury listings? I've used Matterport slash 3D looking for the newest thing. So, so um, I'll let you maybe answer that first, Mike, and then I'll chime in. So Ruthie asked, any new ways to market luxury listings? Uh, she's been using Matterport. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, obviously, Matterport, that's great. We, in New York, we've had a couple of brokerages that, you know, adopted Matterport, have for a long time. And literally, again, in a state that was locked down, where you couldn't show physically sh show listings, they were doing that. I mean, I think, you know, social media is obviously a, a big way. And Mike, you're, you're more of an expert in this than I am. But like, you know, I, I think when you go out and you look at where your buyers are, that's where you want to be. And, and, and you've got to be, you know, connecting with them in any means possible. I think social media is a great outlet right now to be able to do that. Um, but to me, it, it still starts and ends with the old traditional ways of, of getting out there, knowing who your sphere is and trying to connect those dots. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll let you kind of pipe in on where you think. Yeah. Best. No, that I think, I think that's good. So, so blocking, you know, using a football analogy, you know, the blocking and tackling, there's not a, uh, I'll hold this up. I know it's in reverse, but there's no, there's no, uh, there's no easy button. Right. So hold on my, my camera. Can you see me okay? Yeah, there's yeah, no easy, easy there's button. no easy button, right? And so everybody's looking for this easy button, but the reality of it is, I do think, Ruthie, uh, some of the basic fundamentals, like having amazing photos and descriptions. And when I say photos, sure, I'm talking professionally, you know, professionally, a professional photographer, but also, what are you accentuating with the home? What are you downplaying? You know, some agents show too much. I'm coaching an agent right now on the East Coast, and he's trying to secure a trophy listing. And it was a home that was previously listed before. He sent me the link, and the previous agent, I think, showed way too much. There was very um, eccentric. Uh, like lower level and and some of the window treatments, so it needed to be staged and decluttered and be honest there were no drone photos they didn't show as much of the yard is so knowing what today's consumers what's important 
and and highlighting those is that that's a learned skill and and so taking a look maybe even having top agents in your office i guess audit your listing say hey am i missing something should i show more of something because um, that's really important and then of course yeah 3d matter boards are important i i do those i also believe in video i like video over the 3d tours but on unique properties have both. Um, so that's something that's really, really important, but uh, getting a fresh perspective to make sure that, because we have to put as agents, our personal likes and interests and styles, we gotta check that at the door. It's what market research, what, what are buyers wanting? Okay, so if the seller's got you know brass fixtures and they have pink wallpaper and you love it, put your feelings aside. What does market research suggest? So. And so that's the bad guy sometimes. And so we, I, I wrote a book, I don't know if I have one around there, called Outside the Box. And it's basically a visual book of, of staging before and afters. And so uh, again, you could have the 3D tour, you could have an amazing video, you could rent a Goodyear blimp that's got the website on it and fly around New Jersey. If the photos are terrible and you're overpriced, you know, it's not gonna help. It's good points, good points. I was, when you were, uh... When you asked me to be honest, I kind of looked at some of the luxury listings we had out there from a Century 21 perspective. And I got to tell you, you know, nine times out of 10, they've got a gorgeous, beautiful video. And I think obviously people, that's what people love nowadays, right? You got to have some type of video attached to it, but you don't want to show too much. You don't want to show all the, uh, all the, uh, the fuzzy stuff as well. So good points. Mike. Yeah. You got to, you got to be careful with that. Right. And you got to check with your owners with privacy and some of these, you know, multi-million dollar properties, they don't want floor plans out there for security reasons. They might not want a 3D Matterport tour uh, because now you're showing floor plan for security. And so you might, you know, shoot some video, right? Some exterior video, some key, you know, rooms and key areas of the, of the house. So that's gonna be really important as well. Um, and, and, and you wanna make sure you qualify your buyers. There's a lot of fake buyers out there in all markets. I don't know what they get from, pretending they're qualified, but fake letters and everything else. So um, do your due diligence. Um, those, are, those are great points. Um, we had somebody in the chat, they typed in a, a question. Um, can you repeat those definitions again? Stephen uh, Velezquez said, can you repeat those definitions again for luxury and high end? Thank you. So, so yeah, so for our, for our students, for our designation, Stephen, we define high end homes as homes that are two times the average sale price for your given market. And we define luxury as three times. So again, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, Mike, but, but do you know uh, from the fine homes and estates division side of things, um, how, how you guys define luxury? Yeah, I, I think uh, our fine homes and estates is one and a half times the average sales price. And, and okay. again, you know, uh, depending on how you title it, it's all a little bit different, right? Um, sure. High end versus luxury. I mean, I think, you know, it's safe to say in any market, you know, 75% to 125% is kind of that core mass market where most yeah. of the transaction sides re reside. And then everything outside of that is, uh, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder in my mind. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Great point. Great point. So, um, let me let me look at my my questions that i wanted to ask a couple others um so you guys while we're talking about it, you guys did um you know about a year or two ago you did relaunch your fine home and estate website which it looks great you guys are doing some really uh great things there's an agent in my market that has a two million dollar listing with uh century 21 and so i've uh, been really pleased with what, uh, what what I'm seeing out there. Again, for those of you that don't know me, I'm kind of agnostic, right? So although I hang my license in the Chicagoland market, you know, my consulting company works with all brands. So um, I, I believe that there's something special in each brand. I feel like in our industry, unfortunately, there's a lot of my brand is better than yours and a little, uh, I call it a uh, scarcity mindset. But um, I don't see that at all within the real G brands. I feel like you guys are uh, not just Century 21, but you know, I've had Craig Hogan on from Cobalt Banker and, yeah. and um, good friends with Simon Chen and, and, yeah. um, and Dave you Collins and those guys. About the industry, Mike, over the last 90 days, is I, I really feel like we as a real estate industry have come together and really tried to help one another out. I always say the best thing about the Century 21 brands is the people. Um, and, you know, we've been able to, mastermind, best practice share, you know, because 
states, you know, went into this and came out of this a little bit differently. Uh, if you don't know from a Century 21 perspective, as I said, you know, we have a huge population in China, right, where you have a ton of luxury buyers coming from China over to the US. China went into this pandemic before anybody else did. And so we took a lot of what they did and how they adapted uh, to the pandemic in the real estate market and used it and executed upon some of their great ideas to help our folks come out of it and overcome it. And so, you know, I, I think the industry really has come together as a whole to really just try to push one another forward and help one another out. I mean, you know, as I said, some of the cool things about our brand is that, you know, we're everywhere. I, I was looking online, I think right now, um, the largest listing that we have as a brand is a $60 million island in New Zealand. So, you know, oh, I, know that's awesome. I know you're around the luxury market. If you have a buyer for that, let me know. And we'll, uh, we'll make sure we put them in touch with the right people. But, you know, to your point, I, I think the industry has really come together and done some great things with one another and been agnostic to help all of us try to push forward. Yeah, and I would agree with you there. I definitely feel like during this time, you're, you're seeing the, 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 brands come together, which is great. I mean, that's what it should be like all the time, but let's hopefully we'll continue with that. But, uh, you know, from, you know, your predecessor to you guys, I've always been, uh, I actually presented at the Century 21 National Conference going back. I, it was in, it was in uh, Louisiana. I want to say it was 2000. And eleven at the time, and uh, so I was down there. It was it was Orleans. great? Yeah, I remember yep. that. Yeah, uh, it was back to back because I think right before you was ERA, and right after you was somebody else, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so, does anybody else have um, questions for for Mike? While uh, I ask, keep going here. But Mike, uh, really good good information, and I'll open it up for Q and A here in a minute. Um, so, so I, I mentioned your last conference, but you corrected me. So you guys had right before COVID-19, I, I, I vaguely remember seeing it. Yeah, you guys were out in LA, right? Well, we Beverly LA. Hills or? In February, we were literally at the Staples Center. And Mike, believe it or not, um, you know, tragically, they hosted uh, after, you know, obviously we planned this way far in advance, but it was on, uh, it was on the 24th of February, which um, if you don't know, that's the day that they, you know, celebrated uh, Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the seven other folks who perished in that tragic accident, uh, you know, a bunch of months ago. And so literally, it was, uh, there was a ton of energy, a ton of excitement, a ton of just um, you know, kind of people holding their hearts out there and everything that, you know, Kobe Bryant did for, you know, the NBA in this country and what a leader he was. And uh, it was an interesting time, but it seems like so far ago, but we were lucky enough to get it in and, uh, you know, have it at a great place and uh, really celebrated some of the things that we accomplished as a brand last year and some of the things we're hoping to accomplish this year. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, that seems like so long ago. I was at the Realogy, Realogy 2020 conference in Niagara Falls. Uh, that's where I was at the time. And um, actually, we, we just went on a Griswold family vacation. I got back last week and because uh, we we had you scheduled, if you recall, oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, a couple of weeks back. Thank you for your flexibility. We did the whole Mount Rushmore and Redlands oh, National cool. Forest. It was, it was really cool. So did you do that in an RV? We, we did, we rented like a sprinter van, if you will. Um, uh, we had three rows of seating and we put on over 3,500 miles. And uh, my wife is actually, she continued on to Arizona and she's in Texas now. And I flew for the first time since March uh, out of John Wayne airport. And, uh, but it saw parts of the country were beautiful. And my favorite part of the trip was uh, white water rafting in Big Sky, Montana. I actually took a picture. There was an ERA office. I'm good friends, as I mentioned, with Simon and, and Dave Collins. I, I was in Bozeman, Montana, and I saw an ERA office and That's snapped awesome. a picture. Uh, if you ever get a chance, do that with your family, Mike. So, so Mike, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, again, you, you want to talk how the world shifted. Like, you, it, try, I dare you to try to go to find an RV right now because people all over this country – from a summer vacation perspective, are renting RVs to do exactly what you just did to be in the great outdoors, right? So yeah, they're yeah. not hopping on planes, they're not going to Disney World, they're not in yeah. theme parks, right? So it's yeah. a great place. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was seeing parts of the country you never, never see. But um, so 
Uh, let me look, let me open it up for Q&A here and any other questions. Um, Gina Morris says uh, Facebook. So yeah, Gina Morris, uh, our, our Facebook group is called Luxury Listing Specialist and our blog, uh, you can go to Lux, L-U-X-E, Redefined, Lux Redefined. You guys can just Google me or go to michaellafito.com is my name, Michael Lafito. Uh, but thanks for that. Um, all right, last but not least, um, do you feel like selling digitally is the new norm for real estate agents? You know, I, I think right now you've got to do a couple different things. You got to one, you got to have a digital virtual listing presentation. You got to have a digital virtual buyer consultation, and you've got to be able to show people how you're going to have the ability to buy or sell their home in a safe health conscious way way right so i i think you know the pendulum swung and and in, until there's a vaccine in this world i think we've got to be ready to sell virtually i think we've got to be ready to do a lot of things digitally and virtually you know one of the things we did at century21.com is made you know virtual open houses literally a week into this thing because you know you people that won't go to open houses 54 percent of the public said they would never step inside an open house uh, you know, in, in these times and rightfully so. And so, you know, we've got to adapt ourselves. A lot of people are doing it. Um, and for now the answer is yes. And, and we've, we've really sprung that way, but you know, I do believe the pendulum will swing back and hopefully, you know, at some point in the future, we all feel more comfortable going to sporting events or to Disney world or into open houses. So, but for now, yeah, absolutely. Make sure that you are digitally and virtually enabled. That's nice. Now, as far as Century 21 is concerned, um, don't share anything that isn't public, but is there any um, fall, you know, virtual event? Are you guys doing any kind of, uh, you know, because I know your, your events are usually in the spring, so yep. you, you have plenty of time to plan 2021 event, but, you know, any type of mid-year, a couple of years back, uh, you guys, I was invited to speak at the mid-year, it was down in yes. Florida, uh, invite yeah. only. We have our top agent retreat and our leadership event, which were scheduled for October in Hawaii. Um, and we actually just two weeks ago said, hey, look, there's no way that we're going to feel safe or right in hosting that event. Um, we switched it to a virtual uh, event, which we're really excited about. We got some really cool things that we're adopting for it. Um, and Mike, next year is our 50th anniversary. We have it oh, saved and booked for February, which will be our global conference. Um, and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen at that point? Right. I'm hoping we're in a good, safe spot where, you know, like you said, you are on an airplane and staying in hotels where, you know, we're at a point in this country where we feel like we've gotten past it and people are ready to be out and traveling again. But, you know, if they're not, we'll, we'll, we'll make ourselves flexible and figure yeah. out where we have to head. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, for anybody that's not with Century 21 that's watching this replay, we'll, we'll be posting the replay again on our uh, group page. It's on YouTube. Go to Luxury, excuse me. We are on YouTube. Go to Marketing Luxury Group. That's our channel, Marketing Luxury Group. You'll see the other previous 27 lux Luxury Lunch and Learns. Wednesday, uh, we have one this week, and Thursday, we're taking Friday off. Uh, you go to Marketing Luxury Group on YouTube, but on Facebook, it's Luxury Listing Specials. Totally free group content we'll be uh, putting the replay, but Mike, for anybody that isn't with Century 21 and they want more information on Century 21, uh, maybe to see if there's a franchise opportunity or if there's an office near them, or just hear a little bit more about what the unique value proposition is uh, as you approach the 50 year anniversary, which you just shared, uh, what's the best place? Where, where should they go for that? Yeah, I think it's to our global site. They go right to century21.com. You want to connect with me personally, you can go to my LinkedIn or my Instagram account and uh, love to make a new connection in this industry. It's one of the things I love about it is the people. So, Mike, I appreciate the opportunity to be on today, yeah. man. Keep doing what yeah. you're doing. Thanks for pushing the luxury envelope for everybody and keep sure. folks trained up and educated. I think it's really important for all of us as an industry. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for, you know, you're, you're approachable. There's not all, not all leadership is you're, you know, a straight up guy. Appreciate that. You're doing some amazing things. And the last thing I'll leave for everybody that's watching this is, you know, if you have a seller that's on the fence, but they're comfortable with putting their home on the market and you have things in place to make sure, you know, buyers are safe and, you know, agents are wearing booties and there's disinfectant, but you have, and the seller's comfortable, that's the key, but they are comfortable and they're not sure if they should put their home on the market now or wait till next year, 
just keep it really simple. I tell sellers all the time, I just had a closing last week and they interviewed one other agent previously and they went with me and that agent said, wait till next year. Keep it really simple. I told the seller, you got a 50% chance of selling if we put it on the market now, we got a 0% chance if we, we don't. So it really depends on A, if they're comfortable and if they are, then of course you got to do the things in place to make sure you position it properly. But that's my little free advice at the end here. Mike, appreciate your time. You guys, great audience. Sorry for the technical difficulties and the shaky camera on my part. But uh, the, the desktop, as you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's finally up and running, but it wasn't you know, 45 minutes ago. So thank you guys. Have an awesome Monday. Have a great 4th of July and stay safe out there. Thanks, Mike. Happy 4th, Mike. Thanks for having me. Right, thank you, guys. All right, bye-bye.